Community Connections CBMS Local sounds, thoughts, passions, and success Celebrate local Your neighbor's got a story to tell Community Connections Happy Monday, Waterloo Region. It is the 4th of September, 2023, Labor Day. The day when people are moving, lots of students moving into Kitchener. Welcome to Kitchener students. In the studio, we have Missy Bauman, who's going to be doing a live, on-air, in-studio performance for us today. Go ahead, Missy. Lovely. <laughs> Thank you, Missy Bauman, for coming into CKMS Community Connections. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. That's lovely. What's that called? That's Best. That's Best from the new album. Yes. Yeah. Tell me about the new album. Oh my gosh. It's, it's been a long time in the making. Um, I got a grant to record it from the Ontario Arts Council oh. in 2021, so two years ago. Um, and every time I had my studio time booked, I got sick, got COVID four times oh, in man. 2022. Um, and finally got it recorded last December and it came out in June. So it's wow. been, it's been great. It was a big project for me. There was a lot of, um, hiccups obviously, but also it was the first project I fully produced by myself. Um, okay. and mixed and mastered, um, which was 
a, t- a challenge, oh, but it's something yeah. I'm really proud of. Yeah. Did you have an engineer? Did you have to go into a studio to do the mixing? And um, I, d- I went to uh, oops, sorry. I went to Grant Avenue to do the recording. Um, so I had a recording engineer, uh, Amy King. Lovely, lovely. Cannot recommend her enough. Um, but then from there, I did all of the mixing and mastering at home, uh, just with my home studio stuff. Okay. Yeah. That yeah. uh, must have been a challenge because it's a different skill set from playing and, and writing the music. A hundred percent. Yeah. So mm. you're, you're well-rounded. <laughs> what made you choose best to, to be not only the released single ahead of uh, the EP, but to play it as the opening uh, song today? It's funny. When I first listened to Best after the studio, I, I wasn't even sure I wanted to put it on the album. I really liked it, but I thought there was something missing from it. Yeah. So I sent it to my friend Ben. He plays in a, a band called Said the Whale in Vancouver. They've been okay. my favorite band for 15 years. I've got my arms are covered in Said the Whale tattoos. Yeah. And I just shot in the dark was like, do you want to do you want to add something to this? And he took the track and recorded in Vancouver his parts. And it not only just a dream come true to collaborate with yeah. him, but also he he made it really special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Said the Will was one of the first bands we played on CKMS Community Connections way back in 2019. Really? They had something new coming out then, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So got to have them at least on a phone interview, if not coming into the studio. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. You're up there with the big leagues. <laughs> oh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. How's the album been received? Good, really good. We yeah. played a... Uh, Played a couple festivals this summer, um, me and me and my band, and yeah, it yeah, it's just been, it's been really great. Um, lots of listens from all around the world. Yeah, yeah. 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 So you're tracking that through things like Spotify and yeah. SoundCloud, Bandcamp, Artist Insights. Yeah, yeah Artist Insights. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Is that something that uh, is available to the public, or is that something strictly for the artists to? I think it, it's just an artist tool. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure if you might be able to access it. I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> we get most of our stuff directly from the artists. Right. Yeah. So that's uh, at least that's how I get most of the stuff that I'm playing on, on the uh, radio. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How about mainstream uh, radio play? Have you been getting much of that? Um, at CBC for sure has, yeah? has been great. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially, uh, around like that festival, uh, season when right. I was playing shows and stuff. Um, yeah, and, uh, and community radio stations as well. Is yeah. It's been it's been just lovely to share and yeah. <laughs> yeah the, the the music you're playing, the the uh, ethereal folk music, you know, the um, it reminds me of, of wispy tendrils of, of fog over a marsh or something like that. It's it's, it's lovely. Love it. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> but it's not the kind of thing you hear on mainstream radio much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I kind of. I kind of made a call with this album. Um, I think my first album had a lot of, I'd say, like, more rocky songs, yeah. more, like, pop angle. And with Bruises, I I wanted to create something that felt true to my heart, and I didn't want to think about what are the buzzwords right now for radio, what are the okay. hooks, what are the... That kind of thing. I just... I wanted to make something that felt like... A direct IV line into my system and out, and right. I, I feel like it was a, a very genuine expression of of myself and my stories. And yeah, I know that this is Missy Bowman unwrapped. Exactly, yeah. Uh. And it, it's it's been received um, very warmly from the from the people who listen. It's not so much something that you know. Indie eighty eight might pick up, but that's yeah. that's okay. It's totally fine. Yeah. I it's it's me and truly me, and I'm proud of yeah. that. And I guess your fan base knows where to find you at the festivals. Yeah, and they know to listen to community radio. Uh huh. Where, where mm-hmm. you get the plays. Yeah. <laughs> so some of the other songs on uh, on bruises, uh, they're all of the same. They have, they all have the same genre, the same feel to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but you said you had more rock-like music in your earlier albums. Mm-hmm. Uh, what made the change? 
Um, I think when I recorded my first album, um, it's called Don't Fear the Dark. I, it was actually recorded over 2015, 2016. I wasn't getting funding from the OIC oh. back then, so it was a, a stretched out process to when I could afford to work on it. Um, but I went to college at Seneca uh, for music production, and all of my friends were rock and rollers. They're all garage rock bands, and I feel like that had a huge influence on how I was creating things. And also just the push from school to be like, to... To be commercial and Exactly, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I heard a a new phrase the other day, dominant radio, dominant media. Mm. And, uh, you know, that's what influences a lot of people to write the way that they do, Mm -hmm. which is unfortunate. So I like the way Bruises came out. Thank you. Thanks. So what's coming up uh, in the future? Do you have another album in the pipe? Um, I think I do. I think I do. Yeah, I just, um, uh, winter is always my creative flourishing season. Mm -hmm. I get very, very depressed, which is great fuel. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Silver lining. Yeah, I write, I write the most then, and, um, I, I write a lot of songs. I have over 400 songs already in the bank. But, you know, I always want to write something new. And I'm feeling I'm feeling that urge more and more. So I feel like I'm at the beginning of the next cycle for a new project. Okay. And from what we were talking about before the show started, you're undergoing some life changes yourself. <laughs> you're one of the people who's moving. <laughs> I am. <laughs> yeah, so is that fuel for songwriting? Yeah, oh, I hope so. Yeah? yeah. Well, yeah. Or the place... Our living situation was a little strained, a little complicated, and I I feel like a change will just yeah. help help everything move smoothly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Will you have the same sort of setup for recording, for engineering, for producing? Yeah. 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 Tell me more about producing. I'm only learning about producing recently. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, uh, I found out that producers have a huge creative influence on what comes out. Mm-hmm. Um, so you had a producer on your second album, on your first album? Um, Somebody to, to manage how the sound came out? It was, it was kind of um, like a Swiss cheese group of people <laughs> coming. So for one song, especially the first album, because it was so spread out in the process and different studios and different places. So I think the first album, there was at least like five people with guidance and okay. yeah and the second album it was like a covid project so it it wasn't it, i guess it was self produced as well but mostly live off the floor takes there wasn't a ton of complicated mixing going on okay. there wasn't a band that kind of thing um it was just here's me playing the song kind of thing whereas this was bruises has full band tracks it has a lot of stuff added in post. I added mm. um, cello and lap steel and melodica. All of these instruments came after as a as a production choice. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, and well, that's band interesting. Tracks so the song got built partly during the post process, the mm-hmm. post production process. Mm-hmm. Huh. Yeah, and because I was the producer, I could spend as much time as I wanted dilly-dallying, trying things out. I wasn't yeah. paying anyone by the hour. It was all me. But that's, it's also, it, it took a lot longer, I'll admit. Like, I I feel like I am a songwriter first and a producer probably maybe last in there. But I do, I know yeah. my way around Pro Tools. I know I can figure it out, just not at the speed of someone yeah, you know yeah. who does that? Can't hire Missy Bauman as a producer just yet, <laughs> unless you want to wait six months. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, as long as the product coming out is good, that's mm. uh, that, that would be wonderful. Mm. You have something else to play? Sure. Um, yeah, I'll I'll play uh, one from my last album, I think. Okay, mm. from Bruises as well. No, from oh the Sweet. previous the yeah. previous album yeah from, from Sweet. sample pack uh-huh. yes. <laughs> um, it's called Infinite Everything.
Lovely, like everything else. <laughs> and finger picking. I love finger picking. Mm, me yeah, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The kind of music you're playing doesn't seem like the kind of music suitable for the huge festivals that I'm familiar with. You know, the mm. um, Woodstock, Burning Man, mm -hmm. you know. You, you have the music that's more suited to a, a smaller, intimate setting. Mm. Yeah. Do you play any of those venues? Um... Yeah, I, I'll tell you, the best show I ever played, um, it was a, a church in Guelph. Um, Donovan Woods was playing, and he had sold out the venue before mm -hmm. I was added to the bill. Huh? They added me last minute, so I knew no one in the crowd at all. None of my friends could come because it was sold out. And I, I say it was my best show ever because even though it was a big crowd of people, everyone listened, and it was quiet. Whereas when you play like the a bar or mm. a venue like that and people talk, it's you lose the magic. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Oh. So to have that many people sitting and listening and and feeling with me, it was like nothing else I've ever experienced. Yeah. But you're definitely playing the music that needs listening to. It's not mm. background music by any means. Mm. Yeah, there's some bands that can you know play riffs in the background and it doesn't matter whether anybody is listening because you can't understand the lyrics anyway right but uh you're telling stories mm. yeah do you write the lyrics first or does the music come first and you add the lyrics after it depends yeah. um half yeah yeah i i think of 
When I write songs, sometimes I write songs like it's a chore. I sit down and I write because I'm a songwriter. I, I'm going to write something. Mm. But sometimes, and this is all of, all of my best songs happen the other way. It's almost like I see it racing through the universe, ready to smack me in the face. And whatever it is, <laughs> whether it's lyrics or a melody or a guitar part, I, all I have to do is grab it and and spit it out so right. you're just the conduit exactly i, I feel like uh, i don't want to say like possessed i feel like a tool that the universe is using okay and not it, it's random what where it comes out whether okay. it's i have so many voice memos on my phone being like doo, 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 just melodies or all the notes and or right. sitting with my guitar anything yeah what did people do before phones could record <laughs> Dictaphone. <laughs> uh, possibly, yeah, yeah. So when you've got a song that you're trying to hammer out because you're a songwriter and that's what you do, mm -hmm. uh, what's that process like? That's got to be agonizing. Yeah, it can be. Sometimes it it's hard for me to write as freely as I did when I was 11. I, I started writing songs very young. Mm -hmm. When I was 11, it didn't matter if the melody was boring or if the content was ripped off from another song it it didn't matter i just liked writing songs and no one heard them so uh, i had permission to be free in that way right. where as now there is always not only like a, a critic in my mind that is vicious <laughs> and unrelenting but there's also um I look at songwriting differently. It's it's mathematical sometimes, being like, okay, this rhyme, and I'm trying to say this, and how can I make it so it's not forced? Do you know what I mean? It's almost right. like a puzzle, and it it can be it can be like banging my head off a wall a million times for sure, but yeah. it it can also be mentally stimulating to do it that way. Really? Yeah. Kind of like songwriting the way I do Sudoku. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah? Uh huh. Okay. Do you bounce the songs off somebody before you finalize them? Before you say this is how it's going to be on the album? Sometimes yeah. I am. I am so private with my songwriting, and I am an extremely sensitive person. But I have I've trusted confidence. Yeah. Also, my I record like the bruises. The album that came out, I had recorded twenty songs at the mm. studio and picked 10 from there. So at that point, I would show it to people, being like, here's a professionally recorded, how it's gonna be, which ones are the best. So you recorded and produced and engineered all 20. Yeah. And then picked them to go, mm. oh, that's like double the work for you. Yeah. <laughs> what happens to those tracks that didn't make it to the album? Sometimes they, they move forward. There were, one of the songs on Bruises was a, a discard from Sweet. Oh. That that I it didn't fit on Sweet the album and I didn't think I would release it but it fit better here mm -hmm. so they might they might come out later they might be an EP I don't know I feel okay. like yeah they this sounds so like hippy dippy but I feel like songs know where they want to go and they'll let me know okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there's lots more albums to come over mm -hmm. your career so mm -hmm. lots of places where they can get fitted in and where they belong totally yeah mm -hmm. on the, on the album you said you had a full band to do things not all the songs have the full band no who's no. in the band um so my drummer max bornstein He's been with me since Don't Fear the Dark. He's always been my drummer okay. on every album and every show. Amazing. Um, he's one of those uh, garage rock guys from my college days. Ah. Yeah. So Max is on drums. Uh, my partner Grant played bass on this album, um, which is funny because I, I can't hear a lot of the bass notes. I, I get like a little tone deaf past a certain. Yeah. yeah and I, I, I've never, every time bass has been on my album, it's me playing the root okay. note kind of thing. Never really a part. Um, and Grant asked if he could write a part for it. And after hearing it, I'm like, okay, you got to be on the album. You got to do okay. it. So Grant was on bass. Um, Jill Sautrig, she plays in The Lifers. 
Um, oh, yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. All right. She played cello on the album. Amazing. She, yeah. Yeah. She killed it. It sounds. I can imagine. Mm hmm. And then, uh, yeah, just some guest stars, I guess, came on the album. We don't play together live, but uh, Andrew Nuno played Lap Steel and Ben from Said the Whale uh, played right. on Best. So, right. yeah. And were they in the studio to do the recording, or did you get them to no. nail it in? Yeah, so Ben's in Vancouver. They they come to Ontario often on tour and stuff, but it it was it would have been too crazy to yeah. bother him, get a studio time the time he's here in between shows. So he, I think he just did it at home um, with his home setup, and same with Andrew. Andrew's got a great home okay. setup, so mm-hmm. all remote. Okay. And the same um, band personnel when you're at festivals on stage. Yeah, um, yeah, I do bring a backup singer when oh, I play oh. live. Her name's Angelica Reese. Also been with me since day one. We um, we played Green Belt Harvest Picnic together back in okay. the day with um, Bahamas and Arkells and stuff. And yeah, she's she's my ride or die and love her. <laughs> oh, that's, that's great. Mm-hmm. I, I haven't heard live music from you, I don't think. Was, no. Are there any live tracks on any of your albums? Um, I think Sweet, Sweet, definitely, Infinite Everything was recorded live off the floor um, on my I'm thinking, I'm thinking live off uh, you know, a, oh. a festival or... Oh, no, or I don't think I have any, any tracks like that. There's probably stuff like up on YouTube. Okay. Um, yeah. Up in here it says body bracket live, mm. was, but that wasn't a live performance. Uh, it was, yeah, just live off the floor. Live there wasn't the an floor. audience there, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. That's got to add a whole different dynamic when you're in the studio from when you're playing with the feedback you get from people. Yeah, it is. I the, Most of the feedback I get from festivals are, um, you're, you're louder, you're louder live, but that's just Max Drummond and we all, ah. we all bring it up. I feel like it's, it's a lot... And it, it's the energy of a crowd too. Like our yeah. our onstage energy is definitely not as delicate as <laughs> me with a guitar, but yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Delicate is is how I think of music for Missy Bauman. Mm-hmm. You know, it's 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 not raunchy by any means. Mm-hmm. You no, know, when you say you do more rock and rollish stuff, that's you know tempered by the other work that you do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you write your music with an eye to live performance, or is it all based on uh, on putting it on a studio album, studio EPs? That's a good question. Um, I I don't think I'm thinking of either of those things when I'm writing. No, no, I'm thinking I'm thinking of harnessing this and communicating with my heart and it carries into live performance sometimes when I'm lucky, when I can tune into that spiritual Mm. heart connection while I'm performing live. Um, It's hard to do that in the studio just because everything's around, there's pressure to get a good take. Time constraints. Exactly, yeah. 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 So I, I feel like the live performance is... I don't know, maybe a truer connection to the heart of the song, but I'm not, I don't okay. think about that kind of thing while I'm writing. Yeah. Do you perform the songs live before you've got them recorded or do you wait for right. the album to be out before? Yeah, I play them first. I do little trials. Um, okay. I'll sprinkle new ones into sets and most of the new songs will be buried if someone doesn't come up and say, I really liked that one, unless they specifically say, that they really like that one, but it's likely I won't add it to another set. Okay. Or, yeah. Yeah, for bruises, I actually, I got, I got my parents, my best friends, my bandmates, we all piled in my living room, and I sang them, I think it was two sets of 20 songs, and it was the set of music that became bruises. Um, okay. And I'm like, okay, now tell me your favorite song out of them. Okay. And they helped me decide which ones were special. And everybody came there prepared to mm-hmm. do the reviews, to do the evaluation. Mm-hmm. Notepads out, pencils ready. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. 
don't think I've ever heard of anybody else doing that before. Hmm. Is that a common thing in the songwriting business? I don't know. I, I don't think I've attended something like that before. But it, it's tricky with COVID, you know, like yeah. not being able to perform and not getting audience feedback. It's the songs that only existed for like a year out in the world. And they had... They'd, they were still so new, so yeah. I needed I needed direct and honest feedback in a place where they were performable, they were ready, and yeah, I, it just got to a point where it's like I don't have time to play these songs for two years and decide we need to decide it together right, right now. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. What did you do during uh, COVID when uh, everything was locked down, and did you have online performances? I did, yeah. yeah. Um, I I did my album release show. It's so funny. When Sweet was originally scheduled to come out, I had a full tour out west um, with the Via Artists on Board. You know that program? No, I don't. So Via Rail, the, the train that um, goes from, I think, it, I think it's coast Across to coast. Canada? Yeah. 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 Um, they would hire artists to perform in the train cars. Okay. And in exchange for, like, a performance a day, you get free fare there and back. Oh. Really, really cool program. Um, so that was all scheduled. I had shows going on scattered around the country, and I was supposed to leave, I think, like, April 7th or something. So right in the middle yeah, of the beginning. Yeah. And... It, everything kept getting postponed, postponed, postponed until eventually the program was canceled. Oh. Because even now, like singing in such tight quarters is probably yeah. not a good idea traveling yeah. across. You might be right. But Sweet, um, so Sweet's release, everything was pushed, thinking that, oh, two weeks, I'll yeah. just change the date. I'll change the date and then do it then until August, August 7th. I was. Around July, I was just like, no, I just want to put it out. It's already getting old. It's been done since January. I don't want to wait until this is over. It might never be over just to release it. So um, my friend Eric Bolton has a studio in Cambridge, Mm -hmm. and we decked it all out with lights, and we did an album release show, but a live Facebook, Instagram, yeah. And just our our bubble was there so my parents and okay. my partner's parents and but it was it was so lovely it was as as lovely as it could be you know yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. taking the, the best of a, a bad situation and mm-hmm. making it work yeah yeah mm-hmm. how about something else how about something from that era Do you have from sweet from sweet sure uh, hmm <laughs> Sorry, didn't mean to put you on the spot there. <laughs> um, I've got a song from Sweet, but it's it's a it's kind of heavy. Is that okay? The heavy is fine. All right. <laughs> um, okay, this one's Two Sisters.
pure sheets I've been drinking and I tell you I'm only 16 You said it wouldn't happen But now I'm drunk, passed out on your bed If I had the strength, you know I would have fought back A couple years now Though I still remember somehow Through all the times I've tried Erasing you from my mind My friends didn't believe me Well, I wish they could have seen me Stumbling around in the street After you kicked me out that night Where'd that come from? How is there autobiographical material in that? Yeah, like yeah, for sure. I um, it came from a songwriting workshop I did with um, Hillside Festival, mm. um, and the challenge or the the theme, the structure of it was um, writing songs for peace and change, and um, we were to choose like a maybe a political thing, whatever it was, mm -hmm. um, to bring change, to have positive change. And I, I've i always really been stuck on the statistic of, of one in three children, girls under 18, uh, will be sexually assaulted as, as a child. That's where comes from. Right? Okay. Yeah. And people hear that, and, and I don't think they understand how large that demographic is and so I told my story and um and and that's I think like the two sisters line being it's like there are three girls in your family statistically but it it was hard it was hard to share that story um I'm really glad that I did um it, two sisters did so well um when it was released and I won some awards for it. I had yeah. like, yeah, I, some international, some, the Canadian songwriter hall of fame. I got a nomination for it was, it was just wild to <laughs> sing something so difficult, write something so difficult for me and perform it, but have it help heal people on their own journeys. Yeah really really just trippy and scary and heavy but i i'm glad that i did it yeah mm -hmm. well, i can see that it's still affecting you when you're <laughs> playing it today yeah yeah it, it's you're putting yourself into that it's uh that's scary that's brave mm -hmm. that's i'm, I'm impressed so <laughs> thank you thank you for performing that today thanks I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a hard one <laughs> Hard one to perform, but yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. it seems to happen frequently in the music that you write. It's it's sensitive mm -hmm. music. It's it's touching music. It's emotional music. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, uh, that's got to be tough for an evening's performance when you have to 
bring that to the surface every time? It's, uh, it's most difficult when people don't be quiet and listen. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yes. To, to bring something really vulnerable and something I've worked really hard on and have people in the back of the room yelling for shots and, no. you know, like that, that's when it is difficult for me. Um, emotionally, I feel, I feel very protected um, as far as going into that emotional space when people are respectful. So, I don't know, yeah. Bars, it, it's extremely difficult, but shows yeah. shows where people have their hearts open is is not as difficult nearly as much. Yeah. How do you get the various gigs? How do how do you find the venues where you want to play? Uh, it depends. Um, when I when I first started, it was any venue that would take me. Yeah. Um, I feel like that's every artist as as they go. Um, and now so much, um, I, I've been, well, my partner curates events in Cambridge. So oh, okay. he, he ran the main street music series, uh, that ran last year. And, um, he's been booking indie nights at places, but he is so well-versed in communicating with venues and, um, Man- managing shows and stuff like that so I've kind of taken uh leaves out of his book pages out of his book that's yes, the right word yes. yeah <laughs> um to maneuver my way into shows where I feel like I will shine uh and be appreciated um but sometimes at this point it just being in the industry long enough um and being a kind person I feel like that's also key yeah uh your friends want to help you out right like the the donovan wood show i got added on to was from a friend uh that i had gotten to know over the few years and she really believed in my music really liked it and she gave me that opportunity um so yeah it just i'm, I'm getting really picky with the shows okay. i play now uh, i'm not messaging every bar but um yeah so not the bars so much but mm-hmm. maybe uh, you know, the more upscale restaurants. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Um, yeah, or even house shows, you know. House where, shows. Yeah, yeah, where people are crowded around like a little campfire. and Right, we invitation get, only. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just little things like that where, because I want my audience to feel, to feel good too, you know, like, and that, to create a a space that allows people to open their hearts in the way that I'm opening mine. It's like, it's not, there's not a ton of venues out there where you can do that. Yeah. But my living room, you can. Yeah. (laughs) There's a lot of artists, a lot of musicians, bands looking for stuff like that. So Mm. um, send me Grant's information and I'll uh, stick it on uh, the show notes for today's show. Cool. And then uh, everybody else that I've had in, in the past that's asked me that very question, I can now answer it for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> You're doing a little bit of promotion yourself too, aren't you? A You've little promotion? A promotion for other artists. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, I know that I've got some other music uh, through you into our uh, digital library. Mm-hmm. I'm getting some other artists to come in on Community Connections to cool. showcase them as well. And mm-hmm. that's all thanks to you pointing them out to me. Oh, I love that. Yeah. 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 Friends so. helping friends. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, not that you're a manager for somebody or uh, a publicist. No, no. I think, um, yeah, it's it's just community, you know. Okay. I like, think it's Ethan Gardner. No, not Ethan Gardner. It's um, Eric, Eric Bolton. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But so, yeah, Eric giving me a studio for my album release show. And, okay. you know, we, I, we all help each other out. But I, I'm not as publicist by any means. Just okay. mm-hmm, a friend helping out. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's good. You see it a lot in the industry. You know, it doesn't seem to be a competitive industry. It's not like uh, it's a zero sum game where you know mm-hmm. somebody has to lose for somebody else to to get mm-hmm. the gig. Everybody seems to cooperate to have everybody get all the gigs. Mm-hmm. Uh, enough music to go around in Kitchener Waterloo, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I I think this is 
they told me this in college, being like, your friends don't actually want to see you succeed because when you succeed, it makes them feel bad. I hate that. I hate it so much. I, I look at music when my friends mm. succeed. I feel amazing. I want to celebrate with them. I want I want to like revel in their in their joy and their light. And I've never I've never been jealous or bitter or upset about my friends succeeding. Yeah. I, I don't see that. People that I've spoken to right? don't yeah. don't have that attitude at all. No. So college is wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Was uh, the college course that you took, was that otherwise useful to you? Yes, yeah. it, it was amazing. It was 10 years ago. I think 10 years ago today was my first day of yeah. school. Yes. Yeah, so uh, it was a, a one-year program, or eight months, I guess, um, called Independent Music Production. And they taught me grant writing. They taught me songwriting. Okay. They taught me audio engineering and Pro Tools, that's all stuff I still use today. Right. Yeah. I guess stuff like the grant writing, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the uh, publicity seeking, the, mm -hmm. the venue booking, all those things aren't stuff that comes naturally to songwriters. Yeah. And so the education there is helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, but the songwriting, on the other hand, you've been doing that for a while. I have, yeah. And so, what did college change how you wrote songs and was it beneficial? It, it definitely did change and it it changed for the better like yeah. a million times over yeah i there there are some songs from before college that i find endearing i don't think they're very good because <laughs> <laughs> i wasn't thinking critically i was like okay this word fits here this word rhymes with this word and now it's done and then okay. that's it whereas learning to think critically learning to speak with language that's true to you and not like flowery forced rhymes and and the, the most important thing is going back to fix it when it, when it's done that's a first draft mm -hmm. and i was so afraid to change it after that being like oh but i like this one it's like you can go back to that one mm -hmm. but try and make it better like keep working on it and yeah my my teachers that Seneca, I'm still in contact with all of them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. They're getting wedding <laughs> invitations soon. Ah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Ooh, this is part of the reason for the move? Um, I'm moving back in with my dad. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> with, with my fiancé. It's just craziness, yeah. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's market uh, <laughs> rental, is it? That's uh, causing oh. that to happen. Oh, my gosh. It's terrible all over, let me tell you. It's a nightmare. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But you're getting married. I'm getting oh, married. Oh, well, congratulations. <laughs> congratulations. Thank you. So when a musician gets married, mm -hmm. what sort of music gets played at the wedding? Oh, my gosh. We tried to hire a band called Boy Golden from Manitoba. Ah. It didn't work out. I was talking with their booking agent. It was ambitious. Um, but we're going to have we're going to have a room full of musicians, so many musicians in the crowd. So what we're going to do is hire a live band with no singer. Um, and they have a karaoke uh, list of songs. So you pick the song. They have an iPad with the lyrics. And everyone gets to okay. sing. Mm -hmm. And then just close it off with a big jam. You That's going to be better than most of the karaoke bars I've been to, I'm <laughs> sure. If it's all musicians out there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's great. It'll be a blast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, causing a, a crimp in your songwriting and your performing? Is that... The wedding? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Everything on hold while you're getting married? I never, I never really thought about that. Um, honestly, the move has been bulldozing everything more. Okay. Like moving. everything, yeah. You say that moving and getting married are the two most traumatic things that can happen in your life. <laughs> traumatic? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it takes it takes years to recover from oh, from gosh. the upheaval that that causes to you. <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> Sorry, I, I didn't I didn't mean to put a damper on the wedding or the move or anything like that. <laughs> Oh gosh, mm. moving it has definitely been traumatic, but I'm hoping that the wedding will be a blast. <laughs> wedding should be a blast, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you've got the uh, the people coming over, all your friends, mm -hmm. and uh, it sounds like a wonderful time. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think we have time for one more song. Sure. All right. Um. 
Okay, I'll play one from my first album. Oh, because that's the only one we're missing now. Okay. This is Don't Fear the Dark. That's the album. Yes, and this is this is where that line comes in. In the song, it's called Ghost. Missy Bauman on CKMS Community Connections with a live on-air in-studio performance. That's just so lovely. Mm. Yeah, Nice to have you here. Thank you so much yeah. for having me. What are you planning for the future? Any upcoming gigs, festivals, concerts? Um, concerts will come Christmas time. Okay. Um, probably like low-key house shows kind of thing. Okay. Um, I'm going to be doing some stuff with Side Door, which is, uh, are you familiar, Dan Mangan? I've, I've heard of it, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Dan it, Mangan is, was from Kitchener, I think, uh, from the area here, but mm -hmm. he's off on the West Coast, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, so he created this thing to yeah. connect people with house shows, so I'll be doing that. <laughs> okay, that's, mm -hmm. that's cool. Uh, yeah. But nothing actually on the calendar? That no, not until this move is over. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And if people did want to book you for something, I guess, starting Christmas or later, mm -hmm. um, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Um, all my contact stuff is on my website. website. Uh, yes, it is www.missybauman.com. And Bauman is B-A-U-M-A-N. Right, we'll have all the contact information in the show notes. Just having a look at the, uh, the missybauman.com website now. I got a prominent um, picture of the album cover for Bruises. Mm -hmm. so, interesting artwork. Mm -hmm. but, uh, where'd that come from? Who did that? Um, Maddie Braun. Uh, she works at Monogram Coffee Roasters in Cambridge. Oh, okay. So the the owners of Monogram, Monica and Graham, they're two daughters, oh, right? Okay. Do you get it? I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, they're two daughters, uh, Maddie and Kate. Maddie drew the artwork for this. Um, 
I wanted to give her just full creative freedom. She's studying at OCAD right now for, for art, and she had done this uh, sketch and posted it on her story, and I said, that's, that's what I want for my album. So she did me, my favorite animal, a little bunny, <laughs> kind of in this tumultuous phase of growth. Uh-huh. which I loved. I thought it was it was so appropriate for the album's content. So, uh-huh. yeah, she killed it. Yeah. And she opened to commissions? Yeah, I I don't know how you get a hold of her. Just go into Monogram Coffee and, and grab Monogram. a cup of joe, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and ask around for uh, you know, the for, artist. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're on uh, Instagram too? I am, yep. It's... It's uh, Hey Missy Bowman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then Twitter as well, or what's what's left of Twitter nowadays? Oh gosh, yeah. To be yeah. honest, I have not I've not dove back into Twitter yeah. in a long time. Yeah. But I guess I'm on there. And I'd point out Facebook too, but um, CKMSFM is off Facebook. We've mm-hmm. been uh, denied access due to Bill C six uh, Bill C eighteen. Crazy. So, yeah, very crazy. Mm-hmm. And then after um, Christmas, you'll be back into the concert swing. You said wintertime is your time for songwriting. Mm-hmm. So you'll be doing some of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, is there a new album on the horizon after that? I think so. I think so. I, I really want to take this winter to mess around creatively. I just bought a harp, and I'm oh. so excited. Mm-hmm. Oh, harp music seems to be... In the style of Missy Bell. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's okay. going to, I want to try and just, you know, stretch my creative muscles differently, the same way I do with bruises, but in a new way. Yeah. So I have, I have no idea what it's going to sound like, but um, I'm excited to play yeah. around with it for sure. Maybe dribbling out singles while you're working on an album? But maybe, possibly. Um, it just it depends what what is done how fast it's done if i get funding there's so much you right. know yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah one of these days i'm going to have to get somebody in who does funding professionally because i think a lot of artists would like to know how that's meant to work mm-hmm. and i think a lot of artists could take advantage of mm-hmm. government grants and funding and just aren't able to do that because they don't know how right i yeah. know waterloo region of waterloo arts fund great great resource for for any artist and it, it's their uh, application process is very similar to the Ontario Arts Council, okay. but less competitive because it's just, just our region, right? right? So I, I don't know. I'd say that's a great place to dip your toes in for sure. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, link to that in the show notes as well, along with all of Missy Bellman's contact information. And hopefully have all the music you've played today available on our uh, digital library. So you'll hear some more of that mm-hmm. as uh, the days go on. You've been listening to CKMS Community Connections. My name is Bob Jonkman, and in the studio has been Missy Bauman. She's been playing her heart out for us, and it's been lovely. Thank you so much, Missy, for coming in. <laughs> CKMS Community Connections is sponsored by Radio Waterloo, produced at the studios of CKMS FM. My name is Bob Jonkman. The executive producer is Jennifer Strong. Associate producer is Jeff Steger. CKMS Community Connections airs every Monday at 11 o'clock, and again, alternate Fridays at 3 p.m. We'll talk to you then. Mm-hmm.